Hello, it's Jacob Tucker here, and welcome back to another video, you stupid f Just kidding, uh, Luke or El Dumbo didn't want me to uh, say that, so I had to throw it in anyway. But uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, FlowScan, what it is and how you can use it to better understand transactions on the Flow blockchain. Um, so before I begin, just want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Yonder and the whole FlowScan team for doing such an incredible job with this platform. Um, I've had the pleasure to speak to Yonder in the past and, you know, what a brilliant soul. Um, so really, this is such an awesome platform and uh, thanks to them for, for doing this. And I hope that this uh, helps out or helps people understand uh, your platform better. Um, okay, so, you know, with that being said, let's just dive right into it. So I'm at flowscan.org and, you know, what is FlowScan? Well, it's a way to better understand the transactions that are happening on the Flow blockchain. So as I'm speaking, you can probably see here that, you know, look, there's transactions coming in, although, of course, now it pauses. But uh, yeah, so boom, there's another transaction. And uh, sometimes, like in the middle of the day, sometimes this will be flying down. Like, look, boom, there's a lot of transactions happening now. Um, and there's something thing called blocks. So we're not going to talk about this too much. This is a really technical. Um, I'm going to talk a lot of it uh, or a lot about uh, transactions. So like I said, these are all happening in real time. And why don't we even take a look at one to see what it looks like? So if I click on, I don't know, let's just click on this one right here. Oh, it escaped. Okay, boom, there. So I just clicked on this one, and this is a random transaction that happened. That's happening, and uh, how funny! Um, it happens to be a float transaction. So chest bump to me. Great job to you know Jacob Tucker. He's such a genius um, for developing float. Uh, so yay! That's actually really funny. It ended up being float. Um, okay, yeah. Anyway, sorry. So this is a transaction uh, that's happening uh, on the Flow blockchain, and there's quite a lot going on here, right? So what I'm going to try and do is help you understand what each of these things mean, and then I'm going to also show you, um, you know, a little bit more about the NBA Top Shot live feed and what this transaction tab means, and how, you know, maybe if you're a Dapper Sports fan or, or NBA Top Shot fan, how you can find out more information about these transactions. But you know, starting with Float, let's just take a look here. Um, so first of all, you know, there's this thing up top. So you know, what is this? Well, this is a transaction ID. So this is an ID that's never going to be made again. It only is ever going to be associated with this transaction for, you know, forever. And if you wanted to, you could actually take this and you could paste it up top and it would bring you to the same page. So obviously I'm not going to do that because it's not going to do anything, but you can always search by transaction ID. Now, it also says it's sealed and execution success. Sealed means that it's done. It's already done whatever it was going to do. So if this was claiming a float or minting a float or creating a new event, um, it's sealed, right? The sealed means that it's already affected the state of the blockchain. It's already changed the state of the blockchain. Um, and execution success means that this worked. Um, if, it, if there was an error, it would say sealed, but it would say, hey, there's an error. Um, you know, this was the error, right? Um, so that that's that. Now immediately you're going to see this transfer section. Now this is um, a bit a bit wonky only because there was no like actual like legitimate transfer happening. This is really just um, gas. So when you run a transaction, you know, on, on really any blockchain, um, but you know, we're talking about Flow specifically, uh, this just covers the gas of the transaction. Now, usually transactions which change the state of the blockchain, they require gas to do that, right? To actually make that change. Um, you know, in the old days, you know, pay miners, but you know, Flow is proof of stake. But anyways, all that technical stuff aside, it's basically you have to pay a little bit amount of Flow to actually send a transaction. So this is the transfer that's doing that. It's going from, I believe Blockdo is paying the cost for you. So Blockdo is actually for you sending this little bit amount of flow token and uh, it's being received to whoever is receiving it. You know, I don't know, some some random entity, right? Um, so this is just to cover gas. It's not, you know, it doesn't have to do with the actual transaction. And then um, right here, this is showing you, you know, that a float with apparently this ID was transferred from an unknown entity to um, this account. So I'm not exactly sure why. In fact, if I were to look here, um, I believe it's, uh, yeah, so it looks like this is claiming a float. So it's going from, you know, an arbitrary, uh, probably the smart contract to this user. Now, and then we get to the next section. So what does proposer, payer, and authorizers mean? Um, these are, you know, when you send a transaction on the Flow blockchain, there's three different roles. There's a proposer, there's a payer, and there's an authorizer. The proposer is the person that like is initiating the transaction. The payer is the person that's paying for it or the gas, which we talked about up here. And the authorizer is the person that clicked approve. So when you go to NBA Top Shot and you buy a moment and your Dapper Wallet comes up and you press approve to send the transaction or Blockto comes up on Float and you click approve to send it, um, that's, that's you. You're the authorizer. You're the person pressing the approve button. 
So in this case, this address right here was the one that clicked approve on Lilico or Blockdo or Dapper Wallet, and it actually the float was transferred to them, right? They claimed it. So this is usually who you want to look out for. This is the person that's actually making the transaction happen. Um, and in this case, the proposer and payer are both Blockdo. Blockdo initiated it, and Blockdo also paid it for you. Um, or this might be Dapper Wallet or Lilico. I'm not entirely sure. Um, then there's a, there's a script tab. Now the script tab is basically um, the actual cadence code. So cadence is the smart contract language behind the Flow blockchain. So it's what all the smart contracts are written in. Um, and you know if you don't know what a smart contract is, that's okay. But it's basically like a, a rule book that lives on the blockchain that dictates how things happen. So for example, on NBA Top Shot, when you when you purchase a moment, right, all that logic is inside of a smart contract that's dictating that purchasing and, and the creation of that moment and all that kind of fun stuff. So this is Cadence code that's actually doing all that in the background, right? All this complicated code from just taking a look at it because I know this code, um, it's just it's it's claiming a float on the platform. Um, and these are the arguments that went into it. So the address here, um, I believe, is like the event host. So whoever created the event, and this is like the event ID. So whatever event the person is claiming from, right? So so that that's what that is. And then there's also an events tab um, that goes over like all the events that were emitted. So events are things that live in the smart contract that get broadcasted to the network when something happens. So for example, there's an event called float minted that whenever a float gets minted, this gets broadcasted to the network. And these are all the arguments that actually are associated with that float. So it, apparently, um, a float that came from an event with this ID, uh, w from this address, uh, you know, the new float has this ID, this image, right? This is like a hash that gives you the image, yada, 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 right? There's a bunch of arguments. Um, a float was transferred, apparently, you know, all this, all this stuff, right? A float was claimed. So this all happened in this transaction. Um, so now what we can do is, oh, and, you know, of course, there's some other stuff too, like, you know, this happened six minutes ago, uh, this exact date, and this is a block number. So blocks, um, I guess the simplest way to put it is that, um, you know, when people send transactions to the blockchain, um, you know, more specifically, like if we go back to this homepage, um, you'll see like all these transactions are happening. Um, you know, these transactions get bundled into something called a block. And when they're bundled into a block, that block then gets sent out onto the blockchain, hence why it's called the blockchain. And you can think of it almost as like a, like a horizontal ladder, right? Blocks get like one block goes to the network, then another one, then another one, then another one, and it goes on indefinitely and they're all chained together and they represent the state of the blockchain. Um, so you can see here that these are all new blocks. This one had 18 transactions inside of it. This one had 21. This one had 11. Oh, this one had 26. This one had 38. So these are all new blocks that are, you know, bundling transactions together and sending them to the blockchain. So anyway, the reason I said that is because this is a, the block number it was a part of, but not it's not, you know, too important. So now that we know that, let's actually go to, a, you know, more, um, you know, let's go to a direct example on the NBA Top Shot platform. Um, this is nbatopshot.com slash live feed. And uh, let's scroll through here. Um, I'm not a big basketball person, but do I recognize any of these people? Well, Steph Curry. Okay, uh, so I, I know Steph Curry, right? So here, we'll do this one. So you can see, I don't want this to go away. So you can see that all the way on the right-hand side here, there's a transactions column. This will bring us to FlowScan. So let's go to Steph Curry. Let's click on the transaction one. I think it's this one. And this is going to bring us to uh, FlowScan. Right, so just like we talked about, this is the same thing, but this was for purchasing a Steph Curry moment. Now, this Steph Curry moment was purchased for $123. You can see that right here. And actually, if we go down here, you can see that uh, one of the first arguments, tokens withdrawn, this was an event that got broadcasted to the Flow network that said, wait a minute, there were tokens withdrawn. You can actually see 123 were withdrawn, right? So it actually, things are starting to link up now in terms of you know what we're seeing here, right? 100, it costs $100. $123 and then boom, it was you know, this 123 is listed right here. Now, full disclosure, um, what we talked about before doesn't directly apply to NBA Top Shot because they do things in a weird way. And the reason for that is because when you go on NBA Top Shot, you know, you can purchase with Ethereum, you can purchase with, you know, credit card, with all these things that aren't directly in the blockchain. And so because of that, this authorizer is not actually the person that sent the transaction. So when you're on NBA Top Shot and you click that approve button to purchase a moment, um, that's not this person like I talked about before. It's actually some some random account in NBA Top Shot's back end like code base that's handling all the payments on their side, and then some random admin account is like 
authorizing this transaction. Um, so this isn't actually the person. Um, it's just some random admin that NBA Top Shot is ho is like create you know having in their back back end to handle payments. Um, but what you can see is this line right here. This is the really helpful line. So this goes to show you that that you know a Top Shot moment with this ID was purchased from this account. So whatever this OX two four E two eight person, they were selling the moment, and then it got transferred from them to this account OX five zero DFF when this person purchased it, right? So it's actually pretty cool. Um, so if we go back here, I think it's already gone. That kind of sinks. But anyway, like, you know, right here, you know, it, there's a column called buyer. So Eagle Club, at, at Eagle Club, right? Who, let's say we clicked on this one. If we went to this transaction, Eagle Club is this address, right? So because it, it went to this person. So that, anyway, that's pretty cool to see. Let's go back to our Steph Curry example. So anyway, this is all the code that was used for it. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, it's pretty like like I was saying before this is just Caden's code and if we were to take a look at the events you know we could actually directly see like what you know what's happening on the blockchain but again like I think you know it's pretty self-explanatory like here we go this is an event called moment purchased so an event with this ID was purchased for 123 uh, Dapper Utility Coin. Um, and, you know, what is Dapper Utility Coin? Well, Dapper Utility Coin is basically like a currency that, you know, Dapper uses on their own backend server um, to handle payments. So, like, when you purchase in credit card or when you purchase in Ethereum, you know, that stuff isn't on the Flow blockchain. So, they have to do some conversion on their backend into Dapper Utility Coin, which is a native token on the Flow blockchain that's actually used for purchasing. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what this is. Now, just to show you some other really cool things, you can actually go here and you can um, you can type in a dot find name. So I don't know if I want to type in my dot find name because I don't want to I don't want people to like directly see my balances. But um, you know, let's just say let, I don't know. I'll type in hopefully like an Eric exists. I'll type in Eric dot find. Okay, it doesn't I don't know it doesn't exist. Let's type in uh, um. I don't know, josh.find. I'm hoping one of these exists. Okay, perfect. So someone has a josh.find uh, name, and this is their account, right? So this account right here, transactions, these are all their transactions they've sent. Um, pretty cool. And these are all the transfers that have happened, right? It's, it's awesome. Now, one thing I also think is really cool is one of the things that we do at Emerald City um, that I'm you know, the founder of is we actually allow you to discover people's addresses in Discord based on their Discord name. So inside of, uh, let's just go to like the UFC Strike Discord um, and let's search for people. Okay, so Tabco, I know Tabco. Um, so Tabco, if, if we actually right click their name, click on apps and identify user, uh, the Emerald bot actually will discover their um, account. So we can go to their Dapper address. Let's look, uh, you know, let's look that up right here. And if we do that, then this is this is their account, right? So these are all the transactions they've sent. You can see they've been dealing with Top Shot right here, um, UFC NFT. That's another one right here. Um, and yeah, so I guess what I'll do is just to wrap this video up, I'll go over like what, what these mean, and then that'll probably be the end of the video. So the time, this is, you know, how long ago this transaction was sent, um, the hash here. So you can actually click on this hash to go to the transaction, right? That's right here. This is, this is the transaction ID I was telling you about. Um, you know, the, there's roles like, you know, the authorizer, the proposer, we talked about this, right? So apparently this person was the authorizer and proposer of a transaction, um, the status. So remember, we talked about how sealed means that it was completed. So if we click on this, right, it was sealed, it was successful. So whatever this transaction was, was totally successful. But if we go to these ones, this one has an error. Let's see why. If we click on it, it says, um, here we go. This was an error. So there's no offer with that ID in the storefront. So I'm not exactly sure what this code is. Let me take a look at it. Oh, so it looks like this was on the UFC strike platform. And I think what this was, was um, this person went to purchase a moment, but by the time they had purchased it, it was already purchased. So they, they couldn't get it anymore. So it says there's no offer with that ID anymore, probably because someone had already purchased it from them. So unlucky, that stinks, but this is an error. So obviously this transaction did not work, right? Um, so yeah, that's that. And then uh, this last one is interactions. So this is like what contracts it was interacting with. So the reason I knew this was UFC was because it lists that this transaction has to do with the UFC NFT contract. So obviously I knew that was UFC Strike. Um, this one, Top Shot Market V3. So obviously I know this is from Top Shot. Um, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. And then, you know, lastly, FlowScan also has some other stuff like staking stats, 
if you're interested in staking, you can see how many total flow is staked, um, the epoch payout. You know, I'm not really familiar with staking, but you can check it out. And then there's also the blockchain metrics, which is pretty cool. You can see the total amount of transactions that have ever been sent, the total amount of accounts on flow, total amount of contracts, permissionless deployments out. You know, so this is going to increase a lot. Um, you know, here are the transaction counts right over time. Pretty cool stuff. And then the accounts tab as well shows you um, all the accounts that have been made. So, anyways, this is uh, Flow Scan. Hope that was helpful. And um, if you have any questions, let me know um, inside the Emerald City Discord or comment below. So, thanks for listening and peace out. Bye.